Hello and welcome to Inside the Admissions Office, your one-stop shop for expert advice on the smart way to get in. My name is Kayla, and each episode I'll bring you an interview with a former admissions officer, a graduate of a top college, or an admissions expert. These interviews will take you inside the admissions office and will be full of behind-the-scenes knowledge, first-hand experiences, and application tips that will help you get into your dream school. This week, we're joined by Nikki Champlin, a writing expert from Yale and the Iowa Writers' Workshop, to talk about supplemental essays. Hi, Nikki. Thank you for being here with us. It's great to be here. So you are a writing expert, obviously, (laughs) and you've worked with many, many students. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as we get closer to submitting applications, the last thing a lot of students do is really working on those supplemental essays. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me why supplemental essays are so important to the application process? Yeah, they're incredibly important, and it's made me smile that you said it's the last thing a lot of students work on um, because it is such a critical part of your application. And a lot of students start them way too late um, to really give them the time and energy that they deserve. So this is the perfect time to be working on those if you haven't gotten started yet. So why do supplemental essays matter so much? Uh, They matter because top universities and colleges really care about the idea of fit. Um, By fit, I mean, are you the kind of student that will work well in their college community? Different colleges have different character, different personality types that they're looking for, different kinds of students who prioritize certain things, who think in certain ways, who are involved in certain activities. And the place that that really comes through the idea of your fit for their school is in your supplemental essays. And so responding to the questions really carefully and making sure you're answering what they're asking um, and showing your personality through those supplements, that's really where you can make a big difference in terms of convincing a top school that you're the right student for them. Right, so how important (laughs) would you say fit is in displaying your fit is? Yeah, it's incredibly important and it's increasingly important the more competitive the school you're applying to is. Um, And I think that makes a lot of sense if you take a step back and you think about how many good applicants are applying to top schools, right? It's really easy um, for Harvard to fill their entire student body with students with perfect SAT scores or perfect GPA, but they don't do that because they care about having an interesting set of students, not just a perfectly academically qualified set of students. Of course, you also have to be incredibly academically qualified um, to get into, say, a top 30 school, but those top 30 schools really make a lot of their decisions between strong academic candidates on the basis of fit. Is this the kind of kid that fits in better at Harvard than they fit in at Swarthmore? Um, And why? And that's really coming through in your supplemental essays. So they care a lot about fit because a lot of things like your academics, your test scores are sort of like the foundation. They're just like the baseline. And then on top of that, Are you the right kind of student for them? Or could they picture you more at a different university? Um, And so thinking about and convincing them that you'll take advantage of their resources, that you're the kind of student they want, that comes through in the supplements. Right, because like you said, a ton of other (laughs) students can have great test scores Mm -hmm. as well. And so you really need to differentiate yourself from them in different ways. Exactly, yeah. It's (laughs) college admissions is increasingly competitive. but it's not just about being perfect. And I think that's something a lot of students sort of freak out about, right? They're like, oh my gosh, I have to have my perfect grades and perfect test scores. When if all they cared about were perfect grades and perfect test scores, they wouldn't have you come to their university, right? They have these students coming from all over the world and creating this really diverse community physically on their campus. And because of that sort of social community oriented part of it, they care so much about the kind of people um, Mm -hmm. that their applicants are as well. So lots of things like fit can actually outweigh um, your grades and test scores. Of course, those have to be good too. I'm not not taking that point back, Um, but it's really important that you address how much you fit the school as well. Right, of course. I think another part of the application that students can really use to show 
things about themselves other than those scores and their academics is the personal statement. Mm -hmm. um, so could you go over kind of what the difference is? I think, you know, since they're both essays that students totally. are writing for college, it can get kind of confusing between the two. Totally, yeah. I think a lot of students, because they start with the personal statement, by the time they get to the supplemental essays, they're in personal statement writing mindset, <laughs> when actually they should sort of shift over to a different approach for the supplements. The personal statement, it really doesn't matter how much you're answering the prompt. The Common App, if you're doing the Common Applications personal statement, has several different prompts that you can address, but the last one is just write an essay on a topic of your choice. And the prompts themselves sort of give you indications of what they're looking for in the personal statement, that they're really looking for a story about you something with an emotional arc, um, a change, a transformation for you, a big learning moment for you. The supplemental essays, on the other hand, can range dramatically from personal typewriting to really academic writing or really analytic writing. Some of the supplements ask you to be really specific about your impact through a certain extracurricular or research that you've done. And in those supplements, you don't need to take the same approach that you take in the personal statement. You don't need to tell a story uh, that shows your personality in the same way. Instead, you can be more focused on providing the concrete information that they're looking for. And one kind of clue to that is how long is the supplemental essay that you're writing? Some of these supplemental essays are incredibly short. <laughs> um, some of them have uh, prompts where they only give you 35 words to respond or 200 characters. That's really short and obviously very different than the personal statement. And in those short supplements, they just want specificity. They just want a concrete, creative, unique, different than whatever other people have said answer. But they don't need you to tell a story in the same way. But then on the flip side, if you're dealing with a longer supplemental essay, one that's asking you to expand on an extracurricular activity, for example, you are going to have to be specific about your experiences and what you've done and why you've done it. Uh, so your personality should still come through in your supplemental essays, but I think many of them are much more uh, focused uh, than the personal statement in which it's really fine to tell any central story to you, whereas the supplements you need to look very closely at the questions themselves and the kind of concrete additional information they're looking for um, about you as an applicant. Yeah, the prompts matter a little bit more Yes, the, the prompts supplement. definitely matter a lot for the supplements and basically not at all <laughs> for the personal statement. It's really fine to answer any of the uh, prompts for the personal statement, whereas for the supplements, if you don't actually answer the prompt, your reader is going to be kind of frustrated. <laughs> they are asking those questions for a reason and they really want to know the answers. So make sure you're reading the questions carefully and fully addressing everything that's included in the prompt for the supplements. Mm -hmm. Something I've noticed with some students that I've worked with is that they really struggle with the personal statement versus supplemental essays and kind of writing about similar things. Mm. So maybe what they're writing about does answer the prompt really well, but it covers some of the same subject area or maybe the same activity or time in their life as their personal statement. So can you kind of talk about whether that's a good or bad strategy? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because you don't want to repeat yourself. They're called supplemental essays for a reason. They're supposed to be new extra information that they haven't gotten insights into through the rest of your application. Um, they're sort of providing a broader picture of you and the kind of picture that that specific school wants, right? Because every supplemental essay set of questions is unique to that specific school that you're applying to. That being said, though, <laughs> the idea of having a sort of central theme to your application is incredibly important because you want to come off as somebody who knows what you like and why you like it. Um, and if you are completely all over the place, if in your personal statement you talk about chemistry and then in your one of your supplements you talk about business and in another supplement you talk about your theater arts group um, and your activities list has a ton of activities related to journalism and, and teaching and there's just so much different stuff you've, you've done. It can, it can feel like 
What do you like and why do you like it? How well do you know yourself? <laughs> um, there's this sort of myth out there in college admissions that the ideal applicant is well-rounded, that they do a little bit of everything well, and that's completely false. <laughs> the ideal applicant has figured out what they like and done it in a really unique and deep way. Um, and so it is really important that in your application as a whole, across your personal statement, your supplements and your activities list, as well as your letters of recommendation, other materials you provide, it's really important that we get sort of like a sense um, of what your sort of central focus is. What are your main couple of interests, the things that are most impressive, the things you really wanna highlight. That's different though than repeating yourself. <laughs> so I'm gonna to try to give you an example, which I hope will help. Um, so a specific student who I worked with in the past um, was applying as in uh, sort of like international relations student with an interest in pre-law. And she was specifically interested in the idea of working with undocumented uh, immigrants. And she had approached this specific, working with a specific population from a variety of different angles. So she had a law internship over the summer with some legal learning on that topic. She volunteered at um, a facility in her community that was supporting those people. She also had done uh, some series of interviews and done some writing, sort of exposing the narratives and experiences of undocumented immigrants, um, developing her interest in writing and journalism as well. She had also uh, spent time doing self-directed reading on the topic. She was also very serious about mock trial and had done some legal work in that area as well. And she had this sort of like central problem she wanted to address but she had addressed it from a variety of different things. So in writing her supplement and her personal statement, she talked about different activities, right? She didn't repeat the same activity, but it was clear that different activities she had done were connected by a central issue or topic that she wanted to work on. And in one of her supplements, she actually spent a huge amount of time writing about writing. Uh, and the connection was that she had used her writing skill set to show the narratives of these undocumented immigrants and to bring those to other people of her generation. But she spent a huge amount of time in the supplement writing about her own writing process and how she grew as a writer, which was really different than a personal statement which focused on her as an activist on the street, actually in a, in a protest around a policy um, related to immigration. And those supplement and personal statement therefore didn't like overlap, right? That they were about two different topics or activities for her, but the connection was clear and created this sort of overall portrait of her as an applicant interested in addressing a specific issue from a variety of different angles. Right. I think we've <laughs> talked um, in episodes in the past kind of about the application persona. Yeah. Um, kind of like you said, having that common theme throughout your whole application of what you're doing and what you're interested in. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think the supplemental essays are a great place to continue that, but obviously not necessarily repeat the same exact thing. Exactly. It's kind of like you have to come at the same thing from a new angle mm -hmm. is the way I think about the supplemental essays, that that application persona's still really needs to come through, but it needs to feel like new content, that like the things you did in the world and the examples you're giving in the supplements are new. Um, I also think this does tie into the idea of how many supplemental questions are being asked for a particular school, because that can kind of give you a hint of how much different content the school is looking for. Because if there's only one additional supplemental essay, you really wanna stay on theme for that essay, something connected to your application persona, maybe expanding on your most significant extracurricular activity. Don't go to something really obscure if they only have one supplemental question, but some schools have a ton. Um, and if, they, if you're dealing with a school that has seven or eight supplemental questions, that can be a hint that they really want to have a more complex understanding of you as an applicant. So that's the time to start drawing on some different things. Uh, you want to have at least a few of them deal with your central theme, your application persona, your couple most important activities, but it's also a great place to pick sort of a passion topic 
and write one of those essays about something that you haven't gotten to address anywhere else in your application. Maybe your love for hip hop or rap music, maybe a poetry podcast that you run, maybe time you spend playing pickup soccer in your neighborhood, some other kind of quirky, interesting thing about you that you'd be curious to have admissions officers know and understand. Right, and the more space they give you, the more opportunities you have to add those extra details. Exactly. So definitely let that guide you. How many questions they're asking reflects how diverse they want you to go in your application in terms of topics. Mm -hmm. So speaking of being specific and also um, reusing things, something I also see from students, especially for the why school essays, Mm -hmm. is reusing those supplemental essays. Obviously students have a lot of essays to write and so there can be a temptation, I think, to reuse what they've already written. So what are your thoughts on students doing that? Yeah, totally. You definitely want to reuse stuff because that saves you suffering and time and energy. It's just really important that when you reuse stuff, you do it strategically and you make sure that what you're reusing does fit the prompt. I've definitely seen students try to sort of force an essay in there that doesn't really fit simply because they already have it written. And like we talked about earlier, it is really important that the supplemental essay answer you provide does address every part of the prompt. So if you're sort of you know, fitting something in that doesn't actually fit there, that can be a problem. And with the Y school essay specifically, so these are prompts that are phrased in a variety of different ways, but are basically asking you to explain why you're applying to that school, what resources the school has that fit you and what you want, and why you're often also why you're interested in those things. Those essays um, can definitely be reused across schools, but all of the the specific examples need to change. Uh, Schools can really tell if the things you've provided in the Y school essay are generic. If they're relevant to every single school, you're doing it wrong. Uh, If they're information that's easily found on the first page of the school's website, you're doing it wrong. The Y school essay really needs to include information that's unique to that school. So names of classes, names of professors, names of programs, extracurricular activities, specific things that only exist at that school that you take advantage of and why, and why you're interested in those things. And if you're not switching those out for every single school (laughs) for the Y school essay, it's gonna come off sounding really bland and you'll be hurting yourself a lot as an applicant because that essay is incredibly important in terms of that idea we talked about right at the beginning of school fit Um, and the fact that you really understand the school you're applying to, you know what its resources are and you know how those fit you. You do not need to spend any time at all in a Y school essay telling the school why they're awesome, because they already know, right? (laughs) It still is an essay about you, but it needs to use a specific set of information about the school that you like and explain why you like it. And if that's really generic stuff that could be true of other schools, that is a, a big reason that they won't be interested in you as an applicant, even if your test scores and grades are really strong. So I think that's great advice for the Y school essay, especially doing your research and really being specific is what these schools really want to see. Um, And I think a lot of schools have Mm -hmm. that, um, a lot of schools have that prompt among their supplemental essays. Mm -hmm. What are some other common types of prompts that you've seen when working with students? Yeah, so the Y school essay is incredibly common. Another really common supplemental prompt is something about expanding on one of your extracurriculars, like talk a little bit more about an extracurricular or talk about what you did over the previous summer or if you could only do one extracurricular for the rest of your life, which would it be and why? That's a really common type of question. And the reason they ask that question is they're interested in the idea of impact. That's the word that admissions officers will use a lot. And by impact, they mean, how have you affected people around you? What kind of impact have you had on your community? And impact isn't only about numbers of people that you've reached, it's also about how much you've affected certain people or which groups of people you've affected and why. And obviously the bigger the scale of impact, (laughs) the more impressive it is to admissions officers. So in writing about one extracurricular further, 
you do, oh, just to add this detail, students will sometimes ask me like, oh, for one of those supplemental essays, should I write about an extracurricular that's on my activities list or should I write about a totally different extracurricular that doesn't appear on my activities list? The answer is to write about one that appears on your activities list and one that appears high up on your activities list because it needs to be an activity that looks really important to you. And it might, that might sound contradictory to my point earlier about not repeating yourself, but the best extracurriculars cannot be explained fully in the you know tiny amount of space they give you in your activities list description. Uh, that 150 characters, including spaces, is hardly enough to explain the significant impact you should have had through your most impressive extracurriculars, what kind of leadership you had through that, uh, activity, if it's something new that you started, why you're so motivated to spend time on it, how you interact with other people through it. Often you need an essay to explain that. Um, and so when you're writing about an extracurricular activity in a supplemental essay, please pick one that is significant and high up on your activities list and really use it to not repeat anything that's in the description, but expand on why that activity matters so much to you, as well as the kinds of impact that you've had through it. Right, I've, I've definitely heard a lot of our former admissions officers talk about impact, and I uh -huh. think those prompts are a really great way to expand on that. Um, I think another difficult part, and you touched on this um, in the very beginning, of different word counts that a lot of these mm. supplemental essays have. Some are longer and can go all the way up to the length of a personal mm -hmm. statement. I've also seen some that are you know, 50 words. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have any tips for students as they're writing for staying under that word count? Yeah, that can be really hard. Um, and students will often get frustrated with the word counts and trying to say everything they wanna say in that short amount of space can be incredibly daunting. I've even had some students say like, well, what happens if I go over the word count? You know, what if I just don't make it the word count? Would they know? And the answer is that the application just cuts it off mm -hmm. <laughs> after the 50 words or whatever is required. So if you wrote anything longer than that, they won't actually physically be able to read it. <laughs> It'll just cut you off. So being under the word count is incredibly important. Um, in some cases, you won't even be able to like copy into the, to the box in the Common App more than that word count. And it sounds like, you know, maybe you're thinking the word count just exists so that admissions officers don't have to read so much, <laughs> which is true to a certain extent that they're reading tons and tons of these applications. But it's also a skill to be able to be succinct. Good writing often gets shorter as you edit it and as you improve your syntax and your word choice and you really make every word count and you don't repeat yourself at all. So I always think that the, the process of applying to college is kind of like a test to see if you're ready for college. Mm. <laughs> and the effort that you put into polishing your writing in order to get it under the word count is a sort of an exercise in editing your own work. Um, so the word count really matters and it's a skill to be able to be succinct. Um, so some tips and strategies to try for that. First of all, in the first draft, don't worry too much about the word count. Um, like I said, most things get shorter as you edit it. So if your first draft is too short, that's actually harder than a first draft that's too long. Uh, that being said, don't write a first draft that's twice as long as the word count, because that'll be hard to cut down, but it's great if it's you know a third again too long, um, because it will get shorter as you edit it. Um, and it really just does take time energy to cut stuff down, um, to look for repetition, to look for any ideas you think you've said uh, twice in the essay, to you know change the order. If you're saying a similar idea in two different paragraphs, can you rearrange the order so that those ideas are next to each other and then you can delete one? Um, so there's editing you can do to cut down on the level of like the structure of your essay as well as on the level of the sentence and the individual word choice. Uh, everybody uses naturally in their writing a lot of unnecessary language and phrases and word choice. Like when we're talking out loud, we use the word like a lot, as I just did, right? Hearing myself speak makes me really aware of the extra language and words I use when I'm speaking, 
which of course is very natural, but when you're writing, you have the opportunity to cut those things out, to cut anything like like or just. I see a lot of students overuse just, therefore. Um, some students really lean very heavily on these kind of transition words when you don't actually need them to communicate your point. So even on the level of the sentence, cutting words that you don't actually need, making sure that you know if you're using an adjective, and a noun, can you use a better noun? If you're using an adverb and a verb, can you use a better verb, a stronger, more interesting verb, rather than modifying it with an adverb? Those are a couple really quick writing tips for cutting stuff down, um, but they're also tips for good writing. Uh, like I said, writing gets shorter as you edit it. So really putting in that time to edit makes your writing get under the word count and is another reason why it's really important to start your supplemental essays early rather than later. It's incredibly hard to write a good essay under the word count in like 24 hours. Mm. Um, that's the last thing you want to do in addition to the fact that it's incredibly hard to do that and actually well research the essay. Um, Kayla was mentioning how important it is to do your research and to make sure that the kinds of examples you're providing about the school in the Y School essays are unique and that relies on the process of research and finding more about the, more out about the school than you did when you started. Um, so really, I guess the biggest takeaway is give yourself time. Mm -hmm. uh, don't start these too late. Make sure you're giving yourself at least several weeks before the deadline to write your supplemental essays, to make sure they're well researched, to make sure you have the time to edit them and cut them down below the word count. Right. The longer you have to edit, the better those essays are going to be. Obviously. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I do agree. I that made me think of how many professors I had in college tell us, you know, cut down your writing, make it shorter. Like mm -hmm. that's going to show me that you're a good writer. So I agree that that really just preps you for college writing mm -hmm. even more. So you mentioned, obviously, that students should be working um, as soon as they can on these and giving them as much time as possible. So do you have any advice for students on kind of how to build a strategy or a timeline for themselves, deciding you know, which essays to work on first, how to organize themselves? Yeah, that's a really good question. I find it helpful to start with the schools that have a lot of supplements in addition to obviously like knowing your deadlines and starting with the schools that have the first deadlines. If you're applying anywhere early decision, um, that is absolutely the place to start because students are normally applying early decision to their dream school. And that means you wanna put extra time and energy into those supplements. Those often have some of the earliest deadlines. So. Prioritize your early schools first. Uh, pick the schools that have a lot of supplements because as we talked about, you can reuse them so long as you do that carefully and change the things that need to be changed in order to fit the other school's prompts. Uh, so often tackling a school that has a lot of supplements means that your later ones are easier because you're reusing some of the content. Uh, and I think that it's helpful to work backward when you're making a timeline for yourself. So say the submission deadline is November 1st. First of all, you never want to submit your application on the day of the deadline <laughs> because one thing that I have seen happen in the past several years, more often than you would care to know, is the Common App or other application platforms crashing which is of course incredibly stressful for everybody involved. This is only worse if you're using a lesser used platform like one of the school specific platforms or the coalition application as opposed to the common app, or if you're based overseas, any students that are not physically in the US, it's more likely that your application will crash. Um, the websites can slow down because of a lot of traffic on the day of the deadline. And there can be issues as well with students' payment um, not going through when they pay. That's all incredibly stressful. Two days before the deadline should be the day you are actually submitting at the absolute latest. Um, if you want to save yourself the grief of the fear of being within the 24 hours of the deadline. So work backwards. So if you got the day of the deadline, two days before, that should be when you're actually submitting. That means that you want to have your full application done several days before that to give yourself time to double and triple check everything. 
check every part of the Common App carefully, make sure there are no typos, uh, you know, simple, basic things, give other people time to read over it as well, have your teachers take a look, have your parents take a look, have a sibling take a look, anybody you can have take a look, have them take a look. Um, which means that a few days before that should be when you actually feel like you're done with your supplements. So about a week before your target submit date, you should be done with your supplements. So working backward from that, when is the first day that you need a draft of those supplements, right? I would give yourself a couple weeks before that to have your first draft of your supplements. And if you have a day for the first draft of your supplements, when's the first day you should take a look at those prompts and start brainstorming. One of the hardest parts of your college application is not the writing itself, but the coming up with good ideas to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Some of the supplemental essay questions are hard. Some of them require a lot of thinking, a lot of trying to come up with the best example from your life, and you don't wanna rush that. So then again, before your target draft day, work backward a few more days to, okay, this is the time I need to take a look at those prompts. I think you're selling yourself short if that date you end up with for looking at the prompts is any less than one month before your target submit date. So right now, this is the incredibly important time to be starting those supplements if you haven't already done so. Right. There's obviously, yeah, a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work to be done in all areas of the application, especially going right up until submission date. So before I let you go and our listeners go to go work on those essays, exactly. <laughs> uh, do you have any last uh, tips to leave our listeners with? I think it's really important to keep in mind that this process is stressful, um, that writing that many supplemental essays is stressful. Um, and that's why it is so important to give yourself self time uh, and to not buy in too much to the hype and anxiety of others. <laughs> I'm sure that for any high school students applying this cycle who are listening to this, they're already familiar with the idea that everybody at school is talking about this process and which schools you're applying to and which supplements you're writing and why. Uh, and it is really important that you try to take care of yourself in this process. Um, and like I said, so much of this relies on good thinking, not just good writing. Uh, and that doesn't happen overnight. And that's why starting early and doing a little bit every week is so important. Uh, it also just feels a lot less overwhelming if you understand what's involved. So as early as possible, deciding where you're applying and taking a look through the supplements so you know how many you have to write. Um, it's also really important to keep in mind that there will be different supplements sometimes for certain schools, depending on which programs you're applying to. So. You have to be careful uh, as you fill out the Common App because sometimes when you check a certain box, other supplemental essays will appear. So if you check off the box for applying to engineering, for example, many schools have an engineering specific additional essay and certain colleges within a larger university will have additional essays. If you're applying to the honors college at a lot of universities, there will be an additional essay. So. Sometimes you won't actually even see those essays in the Common App until after you've filled out the Common App. Um, in the Common App, there'll be like the writing supplement for each school, but there will also be questions that are within the supplement for each school. And filling out that section of the short answer questions and picking your clicking on your major, your college that you're applying to, will often populate additional questions and supplements. So doing that as early as possible and then looking at the prompts so you understand the work involved, that you can start thinking about the kinds of things that you'd write about, the kinds of examples that you would give. Doing that as soon as possible, I think, really helps it feel less stressful because um, you're not faced with the unknown. <laughs> you're faced with a set amount of work that is a lot of work. Um, but manageable if you start early. So I hope that that's helpful um, in terms of, you know, getting a sense of the workload that's ahead of you and getting a handle on it. Right. Being prepared helps in all areas. It helps make your application better, prevents burnout, which also helps your application be better. Right. This is a really stressful time for students, so it's important to be as ready as possible. Totally. Yep. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to us about supplemental essays. I really hope these tips help students and that they take them to heart as they continue working on their applications. So thank you so much. Of course. Thanks for having me.
And if our listeners are looking for any more information on the supplemental essays, be sure to check out our blog, which is linked in the episode description. We have a ton of articles about the supplemental essay prompts for many of the national universities as well as liberal arts colleges. If you have any questions or would like to request a topic for a future episode, go ahead and give us a follow and send us a message on social media with the hashtag, hashtag Inside Admissions. That's all for now. Thank you for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time as we continue our journey inside the admissions office. Mm-hmm.